Now, when you came to Windsor, what was the welcome like? Oh, uh, it was uh, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. We came to camp, and, and I must say, Windsor gave every every guy a, a chance. You know, there was a lot of we picked up some great hockey players, and Pete DeBoer, we picked up the 14th round that year. Uh, Jeff Bennett, we picked up 16th round. Glenn Featherstone, the 12th round. I mean, Daryl Shannon, Mark Krasowski. Um, we got uh, Pat Jablonski that year, too. I mean, whoever came in and played well. I mean, for instance, last year, uh, Jim Revenberg came in and uh, was inspirational in camp. He, he worked real hard, you know, showed uh, a great deal of heart, and, and he made the team. And, and Tommy's that way, you know. If, if you want to play and you want to work hard and uh, give it your best and you know lead by uh, example on that then, then you're going to be in Windsor because it's a small rink and it doesn't necessarily cater to the most skilled players but rather the hardest workers and although I I wouldn't say that we didn't have a talented team last year with the likes of Kelly Kane and uh, Mike Wolak and Darren Shannon, Daryl Shannon, I mean the list goes on but it would also help to have uh, the bumpers and grinders too. Yeah. I think all the noise we're getting, people are starting to notice this is Adam Grazer, the Detroit Red Wings up here, and they're making a lot of noise. How does that... Yeah, they're all, all going to get a gun and shoot me now. <laughs> <laughs> How does that make you feel, all that publicity, and then everyone knows you and sees your face? Oh, they're just, they're just looking and saying, oh, God, that guy's brutal. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> that I guy's brutal. So. I've seen him over there, and they're all laughing. So. <laughs> Not anything like that. You're just being modest again. When you came here, your first impressions of Coach Tom Webster and Jim Rutherford? Tommy, it, it took a little while to get used to because he's, uh, you know, you, you always try to, when you first meet someone, you know, while well, a coach, if you meet a person, then you're just yourself. Well, you're yourself with your coach, but you're kind of separated because coach is here and, and the team's here. And I, I think at first, the first year was kind of separated. Second year was a little more separated, and then he left to go to the Rangers. You know, last year, we were kind of like one, and, you know, the team was all one. And I think that's why we were so successful because, uh, you know, a lot of people say, you know, there's lots of talented teams, have all the talent in the world, but if you can't become one as a unit, and that includes a coach too, because a lot, like I said, a lot of teams, coaches on one side of the fence, players on the other, and you can't have it that way and be successful. Yeah, you were picked number one in the OHL midget draft. Uh, a lot of pressure put on you. How'd you cope with that? Um, I didn't really consider it pressure, because I, all, like I said, all you can do is go out and give it 100%. And, if you try to worry about things you can't control, then it's just going to interrupt your, your play or, or whatever. I just tried to go out and have fun, and you know the, the fans in Windsor were, were really good that way because I know I had some pretty bad nights. <laughs> and uh, I was out to lunch a few nights, but you know, that's, that's part of the game, it's part of learning, and uh, I think it's consistency is a bit, one of the most important parts about playing up, and uh, you know, I've, I've still got to improve on that, and i got to improve on a lot of things. but. I mean, that's, that's something that uh, is tough for a rookie in the OHL is to come in and play consistent for 66 six games throughout the year, whether it's on the road at home or whatever, take care of your schooling and, and everything else.